Essie just vomited right here on the floor in front of me. So this video is off to a good start. So, <laughs> eh. What is this? What is that? This is my life. Hey guys. So we are in a different room of my house. I'm sorry, Essie's acted like she's never been in this room before either. So that's what she's doing. But we're in my bedroom. I'm not gonna lie, there are not usually this many pillows. Just gonna throw that out there because I know my friends that watch this will be like, that's not what your room looks like. But I just wanted a little change of scenery. So anyway, if you clicked on this video, then you know that we're going to be talking about contouring. I don't know what I'm going to name this video yet, but I feel like it's something like super lazy contouring for pasty white girls and boys, whoever. Just pasty white people because that's the shades that I'm going to be using that work for me and my pale skin. So. Um, yeah, all I have on right now is foundation, concealer, and powder. Obviously, I have on some eyebrows and some mascara and a lip. But if you want to know how I got foundation on my face and concealer and all that, click right here. Go watch that first and come back to me. Or I'll have it linked below if you want to watch that later. Um, but yeah, I did a whole video on like applying foundation with a beauty sponge and sort of some of my tips that I use to make it look good. So yeah, we're gonna be talking in this video about contouring. I'm gonna talk a little bit about blush and highlighter and bronzer and all that stuff too. So first of all, let's talk about the difference between contouring and bronzing. So contouring is creating shadows and sort of tricking the eye into seeing like a different shape than what is there. Um, bronzing is used just to like warm up your skin. So for instance, right now my face is like flat white. I've put on foundation. I don't have any color. So it's just adding color back to your skin and sort of like faking like a tan glow situation. Um, I'm a big fan of like a multi-use product that I could potentially contour with if I wanted to, but it's mostly just there as the bronzing aspect um, because like I said, I don't ever contour, basically. Um, I did like for my wedding and like for special occasions and stuff like that if I was going to like a party or a wedding for a friend or I don't know, some kind of special event then I would probably put more effort into my face. But yeah, uh, the first thing that I'll talk about is cream contours. I know that there are like a ton of cream contour palettes and cream contour sticks and stuff like that. It's not really my favorite. I would prefer a powder. Um, so the one product that I'm not gonna use because they don't make it anymore is the ColourPop Sculpting Stick and it's just like a really light brown, almost like a gray taupe color. Um, but like I said, they don't even make that anymore, so I feel like that would be really mean of me to be like, this is the way I do it, and you can't even get your hands on the product. Um, and I know that there are lots of cream contour kits like uh, Kim Kardashian, Kat Von D, Anastasia, like all of those, so if you like that, go for it. The method is basically the same as far as like where to apply things. Um, I just prefer a powder. And the powder that I like the best that suits my skin is this one from NYX. And this is actually a blush, but it is called Taupe. And as you can see, like I would never use this as a blush for my skin. <laughs> um, it is like a really, really cool tone brown. And when I say cool tone, I mean there is like no orange red hue to it like it's almost gray like look it kind of matches my walls and that is kind of the difference between a contour powder and a bronzing powder is that bronzers usually have a little bit more warmth to them this is what i'm going to be using i do have several different brushes 
but I will say my favorite is this one from Real Techniques. This is called the Sculpting Brush, and it is like a kind of smushed right here, pinched a little bit, and angled, so it does a good angle on your face. Um, another one that I like that I don't use as much because it's a little more harsh is this one from Sonia Kashuk, and I don't know what it's called, but it's like super thin. It's kind of like that one from NARS that's like $50 that no one in their right mind needs. So if you want one like that, then go get this one. And then just since I'm talking about brushes for contour, I will talk about this one. I talked about this in my favorite brushes video. And this is from Tarte and it is their like contour, bronzer, whatever brush. It's very big, very flat and it's more fluffy than like this one is. So I really like this one on the day to day whenever I'm just doing like a sloppy contour as I call it where I'll take like a matte bronzer and just go in those areas and this just like kind of sculpts out my face but mostly just adds bronzy colors back to my skin. For this video I'm going to use this one, the sculpting brush, and I'm going to go in with the NYX HD blush in taupe. So as I said I have foundation, concealer, and a translucent setting powder setting everything down. Um, with contour, like I said, you're making shapes in your face. So for me, I really work on the cheekbone area and then like the jawline. I have a pretty small forehead, so I'll do some up in here like pretty much in my hairline, but if you have a bigger forehead, you can bring it down a little bit further to sort of make your forehead look smaller. But honestly, I have like a three head, so I don't need to make my forehead any smaller. I kind of feel like it looks funny anyway. And I don't contour my nose because she has enough of an angle. So for the cheekbone, you can kind of feel where your cheekbone is like right here. And you want to go like right underneath it. You can do the fishy face if that helps. And there you go. You know where it is. Um, so I like to start further back because you don't want to bring it too far down. So you can do the fish face to help you out. And already you can see like this side has more of a shape to it. It's obviously not blended out, but that's how it looks. And I just like to make sure that I've got them pretty even as far as like how far I brought it down. And I always have one side that's like better than the other. Um, for the forehead now, I don't put any more on my brush, but you, like I said, if you need more around your forehead, then you can. But I just like take what's left and just kind of blend it into my hairline. Take it like around the temples and up into like this area. And I do like a very light dusting right there. That way it just looks like more even around the perimeter of your face, even if you don't need to like hide anything. Then I am going to put a little bit more on the brush and I'm going to go on the jawline. See how I've just like made a shadow. That's why you don't want it to be too warm because it's not going to give that like shadow effect. Like, see how this is just like a french fry head, and this is like an actual jaw. It's crazy.
and we're all done. No, I'm totally kidding. So once you get the contour how you like it, with a powder at least, um, if you were doing a cream then you would obviously like draw it where you want it and then take like a brush or a uh, sponge and like blend it out. But for this, since it's a powder, I just apply it where I want and I really like how this brush like doesn't create too harsh of a line. It does diffuse it a little bit. But now I'm going to take a bronzer and show you how I like incorporate the two together. So yeah, leave them it like this and then I'm going to take a bronzer. I have several favorite bronzers as you may know. The first one I'm going to talk about is super affordable. It is from NYC and this is in the shade Sunny. And this is more warm toned. So let's compare. So see how there's like an orange to this and then this is like completely not that way at all. So I would say if you have like a medium skin tone that this is going to be the one for you if you're looking for like an affordable drugstore bronzer. And then obviously I don't feel like I need to say much about this. The butter bronzer from Physicians Formula. Um, the reason I like this is because it is more cool toned, even though it does have that orangey tint to it. It's not like Oompa Loompa style. And it is pretty much matte, but it does have like a sheen to it. So it does give like a little, a little bit of dimension. And speaking of a sheen, this one from unique. This is the beachfront bronzer and this is in the shade Sunset which is the lightest one. It is a baked bronzer so it's gonna be like a lot more pigmented and this one does have some shimmer to it. So I really love this. It's still like really natural looking even though it has that shimmer to it. And then if you're looking for a super matte bronzer that could also double as a contour um, Hoola and Hoola Light from Benefit, depending on your skin tone. Um, I obviously need Hoola Light. Um, it looks like this. And it is probably the least orange out of all the ones I showed. But if you can tell, like, I'm more of a cool tone bronzer. If you have more of a medium skin, then you can do a little, little more orangey red undertones. But that's just not me. So, to blend out this contour, I'm going to use the Beachfront Bronzer from Unique. Um, I do have two favorite bronzing brushes currently. Um, this one from Benefit is, first of all, adorable, obviously. Um, but it's really soft and really, like, it's kind of precise to where you could contour and bronze, kind of the same as my Tarte brush. Um, and then my other favorite is this one from Eco Tools. This is the blending and bronzing brush. So I'm just going to barely tap in here and tap it off. And this brush is really big, so if you want to bronze up your whole face, like this is the perfect brush. But basically, I'm going to go over everywhere that I went with contour and blend it out. And then I take it down my neck. I didn't take the contour down any further than just the jawline, but I'm just blending this down because obviously you don't want your neck to be a different color than your face. So if you feel like you've gotten too far down here, or if you feel like you've blended out too much and you want to sharpen this up, then the trick to do that is to take a loose powder, I mean it doesn't have to be a loose powder, but a powder, like a powder foundation or a translucent powder. I just prefer a loose powder. And I take a beauty sponge. You can totally use a brush too. I just prefer a sponge. And I like this one because it is flat on the top. And I just take and dip that in here. 
and get like a generous amount and just like I need my mirror I'm trying to do this like in the camera take your sponge with the powder and draw this line like take it down this side so now you look like a mannequin congratulations we're gonna do the other side And while that sort of bakes into your skin, you can move on to blush. I have really two blushes that I want to talk about, and they're both affordable. The first one is from Milani, and it is Luminoso. I feel like if you haven't heard of this, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. But this is just like a peachy pink sort of shimmery but not like glittery blush and it is pretty much perfect on everyone so go get it that's what I'm going to be using today um, another one that I really enjoy is from Physicians Formula and it is a butter blush these are both butter blushes but this one right here is kind of the same thing where it is universally flattering I feel um, and this one is called Vintage Rose and I just took them out of their packaging because the packaging is super bulky like this. And that's how, that's how it died a little bit. But for this video, I'm going to use Luminoso. And I don't really have like a lot of tricks for blush. It kind of depends on your face shape. Um, I will say if you feel like you over blush, then use the three finger rule from your nose and go that's where you need to apply your blush. Some people do prefer more on the apples of the cheeks, but I don't try to get too close into this area because I am very pale and I'll just look like I ran a marathon. And I just kind of drag it up to the temple ever so slightly. And in like a swirling motion. This brush is from Sephora. It's the number 55 and it is my favorite for blush. I talk about it all the time, so I won't continue to talk about it now. To get rid of this powder, I am going to take the same bronzer brush that I used um, with nothing else on it. I'm just going to kick this away. So see how it's like cleaned up this underneath area? So now you have like more of a contoured cheekbone. And then for highlight, I don't know that I could really narrow down my favorite highlights, but I have a high-end and a drugstore super affordable option just one of each. Um, the drugstore one is probably my favorite from the drugstore. I don't even know if I feel right saying that. I, I don't know. These are both what I would think are staple highlighters. So, and like generally would work on anyone in my opinion. Um, so the drugstore one that I have to talk about is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. As far as I know, there's only one shade, but it does say it's shade number 10, and it looks like this. It looks like nothing in here, but whenever you put it on your face, it does give like a really nice little glow. Um, so I love that. And then the other one that I feel like everyone should own at some point in their life is from the Balm, and it is called the Mary Luminizer, and it looks like this. It's a little bit lighter. Um, and it is definitely a little more um, shimmery, I guess. It still could be subtle, but it can definitely be built up to be an intense highlighter. And I just feel like if you don't own a highlighter, then one of these two would be really good for you to try out. So I'm going to use the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter today. 
I have two brushes that are kind of my go-to for highlighting. Uh, the first one is a fan brush. Um, this is from Morphe and it's from the Rose Gold Collection, but I don't know the number because it's rubbed off. But it's the only fan brush in the Rose Gold Collection. And I like this because you can get like pretty specific. And if you like to highlight your nose, then it's good for that. Um, and then the other one that I like for highlight, which is probably weird, is this little brush right here. It's from Japanesque, and again, it's like a dupe for one of those NARS brushes that's like $8 million. Um, this one does shed like crazy, but I just really like how much product it picks up and it like tapers at the top, so it's still like specific, but it'll like really get your highlight on there. So I'm going to use that with this because I'm not really scared of this like being too intense. So I just tap it off a little bit. And then for highlighter, you want to apply it like where light would catch your face. So like in other highlighting videos, you might see people do like uh, the crazy like concealer under their eyes. Um, and that's because like your face is like hit by light in this area so they want it to be like brighter and not shadows. You obviously don't want any shadows under your eyes. So that's why you see people do their concealer like in a triangle because it is a way of highlighting. But for this we're specifically talking about shimmery things. Um, so for me, I pretty much just go on tops of the cheekbones in kind of like a, a C. So a little bit on the temples and the cheekbones. So we're going to do that. I like to apply the bulk of the product to my cheekbone right here. And then whenever there's basically not anything left, I just kind of blend it up into that little... C shape. And I just kind of do this in like a quick sweeping back and forth motion and then slowly do the little C. As you can see it's very subtle but as I move my face you can see like a glow. I'm not really big on nose highlights or like the upper lip highlight, but some people prefer to do things like on their nose and I'll do like a little on the tip and just like that. I don't know, I have trouble keeping makeup on my nose anyway, so I'm not trying to draw attention. Like I said, my nose is a shape already so I don't need all that and then I don't like to do the upper lip thing because I feel like it just makes me look sweaty <laughs> so pretty much all I do is like the cheekbones and the temples if you guys want to see a video on eyeshadow and like basic eyeshadow things like terms I feel like a lot of times on YouTube they throw around like the crease and the outer V and the tight line and the brow bone and all this stuff and you're like what does that mean? So if you guys want to see that then we'll talk about highlighting your eye, eye contouring I should say. Um, but yeah that's pretty much it for the other face makeup. <laughs> so like I said if you want to see my foundation routine then I'll have it linked below. Um, so you can watch that one first and get like the base down and then this is the next step. So yeah, let me know what you guys want to see next. If you want to see like an eyeshadow like super in your face, my eyeball all up in your phone screen, then let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos if you want to see my face. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys! I probably need something on my lips. That's better now. I look super 90s. Essie.
It's like you've never seen that lamp before. Can you lay down and be cute in the background? That'd be really special.